In Hebrews chapter 7, we're, we're dealing with this whole thing about the Jewish priesthood. And this name comes up that, well, this priest named Melchizedek, let's call him Mel. And what they're doing is trying to ask the question, how can Jesus be our high priest if he doesn't come from the tribe of Levi? And so they bring up Mel and they say, well, he's of the priesthood of Mel. And it begins to talk about him, that he was back in the book of Genesis, that Abraham himself tithed the tenth of his earnings to Melchizedek, that he doesn't really seem to have a genealogy, a heritage, he's not connected to the Jewish legal system. And so they say, Jesus is of the priesthood of Melchizedek. And because he's of the priesthood of Melchizedek, well, listen to this verse in Hebrews chapter 7. Therefore he, talking about Jesus, is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. See, all the other priests would die, but not Jesus. He would live forever. He could continue to intercede. He could continue to be our high priest forever and ever. For such a high priest was fitting for us, who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. Jesus is like totally different than all the other high priests. He's a high priest who lives forever and ever. So not from some certain tribe of the priest of Levi, but from a tribe, well, the tribe of Melchizedek, whoever he was, this mysterious, amazing priest that is before the law, and Jesus, who has done away with the law, so to speak, now becomes our high priest, and he's able to continue forever and ever to intercede for us as our great priest. Thank you.